in the day and age of uber short attention spans and low retention rates, a lot of things we consume go out of our minds as quickly as it comes in. But sometimes there are things that just kinda stick with us. Like the first time I subjugated my poor 11 or 12 year old self to images of Smile Dog and Jeff the Killer, among other famous pastas at the time. As a result or consequence of the morbid curiosity I experienced as a little girl, eventually it led me down the horror story rabbit hole for the rest of my life. Up until recently when I found myself reading a one-shot comic sometime in October. Now let me ask you this, if you found yourself in a very ugly place in your marriage with a once loving now turned abusive partner and you decided to punch out their ticket so to speak, what would you do if they somehow came back to life? So I was scrolling through TikTok and one in particular began talking about this very strange webcomic called Watashi no oto wa rei toku ni numete yuru. I know I fucked that up, okay? I know I did. Leave me alone. It's a bit of a mouthful, but bear with me, okay? So what ought to be needless to say is that this video may contain spoilers for that comic. Just saying. Like, I'm not planning on telling you word for word what happens per se, but I mean, I want I want to talk about it. So like, we're gonna talk about it. That being said, please enjoy me working on my comic in the background. <laughs> the fear of a double, a floozy, a fake, or someone who looks an awful lot similar to someone else is something that a lot of people have shown fear of, to be honest. I mean, what else could possibly explain how popular that stuff is in horror? Like, the discomfort of identical twins, boy, I, I think we've seen the creepy identical twins everywhere, huh? <laughs> like everywhere, which I must say as a twin myself, I can't say I see the fear of twins, like I can't really see it, but I guess I can blame American Horror Story and movies like The Shining for that. <laughs> and if not the fear of twins specifically, the fear of potentially having a doppelganger and then having the utter misfortune of meeting said doppelganger tends to scare people and i can i can kind of see that like man like i for one would hate to meet my own doppelganger i don't care how friendly they are i'm running i'm running i just i just don't think i could sit there and casually talk to or even look at someone who is quite literally my reflection in the flesh Besides, we probably all know how this story goes anyway. Should you ever come across your own doppelganger, whatever you do, do not interact with them, period. Do not interact with them at all. I mean, did we not learn our lessons from, from Jordan's Us or the Mandela catalog, God damn it. Anywho, I think the way this story plays on this fear of two it's fascinating. Now, I'm not going to gas this story up to the point where y'all walk away thinking that this story is like the bomb.com. I mean, some of us were probably on TikTok back in 2020 or 2021. It probably was when a certain side of a few anime manga fandoms got whiff of a popular fanfic at the time. I'm not going to name names, but if you, if you, if you know, if, if you know, you know, okay. If you know what I'm talking about, you know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? If you know, you know. But back in 2020 or 2021, a certain side of a few anime manga fandoms got a whiff of a popular fanfic at the time. And all of them, all of them went to read that fanfic, I swear, with the intention of completely shitting on it for weeks. It was so bad, y'all. Like, it was so bad. Like, them folks on TikTok were really sitting here seeking those fanfics out just to shit on the writer. I mean, people were really making videos after videos after videos claiming that they could easily do it better and that it wasn't even that good. Like, just hating. 
god damn it i was so upset with that obviously i still am because i'm just like that's the type of shit that will make a young writer stop trying to get better and stop writing or even worse they would just stop publishing their work well actually i guess those are both just as bad as the other like that's the type of shit that really discourages someone from writing so so that's some bullshit but but i i digress with the beginning sequence of this manga honestly you simply think to yourself yeah no that man is definitely cheating on our girl i forgot the girl's name so let's call him maru so basically in the beginning of this manga because i realized i said that without any real context huh in the beginning of this manga we're introduced to a couple right we're introduced to this couple and frankly in this couple you know like i said we're rooting for our girl but her man fuck that man look right from the get-go you can look at this couple and you can just tell that man is is definitely fucking cheating on her so that being said that being said we established we're gonna call the protagonist the the woman protagonist of this story we're gonna call her maru because i i, I forgot her name i read this story back in october god damn it so as i said Maru is the main protagonist of this story and she lives a miserable life with her husband whose name I also forgot so let's call him Toe. Toe is quite literally everything you would not want in a man or any partner I'd like to assume. He's terrible to this girl. He talks sideways to her, downplays her talents, quite literally chooses to bang his neighbor very loudly and openly mind you and if toe does choose to quote unquote sleep with maru he's graping her to be very frank uh that means they're gonna start beating women smoking hella crack uh, uh... and if you didn't guess it already yes he hits her too toe is quite literally one of the biggest douchebags on the entire fucking planet that like he's a very literal shitty person it's really cute that you're gonna defeat me with the power of friendship and all but again i am the devil from the bible and our girl maru deserves better and she realizes that but she knows she won't be able to just divorce him so well obviously the next logical step is to kill him and hide the body <laughs> enter trope stage left the woman scorned in other words you did me wrong so i've done you dirty i think when a lot of people see instance after instance of some semblance of the woman in the fridge or stuffed into the fridge as it's properly called uh the trope some of us probably lean back into our seat and wonder why don't you just kill him <laughs> but as most people can imagine it's hardly ever that easy maru has had enough of the abuse and infidelity and at the lowest point in her life due to that shitty marriage she felt so so very stuck in she just couldn't quite figure what else she could possibly do i mean i guess packing all her shit and sending it to a country overseas and changing her name and context was just too elaborate regardless she came to the conclusion all the same she couldn't take it anymore and all of that bullshit over the years has driven her mad at this point she just wants to be able to wash her hands of the predicament and shitty husband for good when you're at the end of your wits what other way to handle this than to put your ex in the dirt <laughs> Though I suppose dirt isn't the right word because she didn't put Toe's sorry ass into the dirt. She put him into the shed in the deep freezer. Boy, ain't that a fun way to flip the stuffed into the fridge trope on its head. I mean, it's, it's usually the woman getting fridged, but I digress. In the case of this manga though, till death do us part couldn't be any more wrong. Because the very next day, her man comes walking in, acting all sweet and clueless, and Maru can't help staring at him like a blinking light with no bulb. How the hell did this bitch live? And most importantly, how dare he live after all the bullshit he put her through? 
And this here is where we get to see the cycle of abuse truly take place. Maru is confused by Toe's behavior because he could be so cruel and, you know, he could just be so horrible as he was for the majority of their relationship and marriage. But he could also be so kind. As a result, Maru found herself slowly pulling him back into her heart. But she kept her guard up just enough because she just couldn't help but keep wondering what the hell happened to that body in the freezer? Truth be told, what I liked the most about this short one-shot manga that made it so enjoyable for me to read that late night in October is the ending. I won't tell you <laughs> what the ending was, just in case you might want to go to Bonto.to or whatever that shit's called now and give it a read yourself, but let me just say that the ending was mad satisfying, like it was mad satisfying. <laughs> and based on my brief mentioning of the fear of two, as I called it, you can probably guess what other kinds of tropes will come into play here. But all in all, I enjoyed the fact that despite the tropes used in this story, which had me thinking our protagonist was going to become a tragic protagonist, I'm very pleased by the surprise of our girl Maru getting what she wanted in the end. Should you choose to read it, or if you have read it, let me know what you think about the story. Alternatively, you can write about a horror story you read recently that you enjoyed, or whether or not you like horror stories and stuff at all. That's fine too, you know? <laughs> And yeah, yeah, I know it's December right now and Christmas is like quite literally a week, a week away or so, but like whatever. Okay, but what can I say? I'm still very disappointed in the way basically nobody showed up for Halloween. Like no one showed up and showed out on my favorite holiday, damn it. And so because of that, it feels like I haven't celebrated the spooky season enough and I employ the rest of you to help me do that. <laughs> also, my last finals are tomorrow or Thursday, as I don't know for certain if this video will go up today or not, but the point is, soon, oh, very soon, my schedule will finally free up some more as the winter break comes in and I will be able to spend more time on my videos. Regardless, thanks for sticking with me for those of you who did. And even if you didn't, so be it. I totally understand. And with that being said, hit the like button, subscribe for more narrative and artsy content. And all of you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night.